Welcome to Africa Info Hub. In this video we are going to talk about 10 interesting facts you did not know about Djibouti. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. Djibouti. Formerly the Republic of Djibouti, is a country in Africa's horn that borders the Red Sea. The country shares a southern border with Somaliland, a western border with Ethiopia, and a northern border with Eritrea. The Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden form its eastern border. The country's entire land area is around 23,200 square kilometers. Djibouti is a multi-ethnic country with over 1 million people, making it the smallest country in mainland Africa. Islam is the country's official religion, and it has been their main religion for over a thousand years. It was renamed the French territory of the Afars and Issas in 1967. A decade later, the people of Djibouti opted for independence from France. The Republic of Djibouti, named after the country's capital city, was formally established on this date. The following year, on September 20, 1977, the new state joined the United Nations. Here are the 10 interesting facts you did not know about Djibouti. Number 10. French is the official language. Arabic and French are the official languages of Djibouti, and both are widely spoken. On the other hand, Somali and Afar indigenous languages are more widely spoken. French is a language that has been passed down from the colonial era and is used for communication. According to research, just about 17,000 people in Djibouti speak French fluently. Number 9. Erta Ale is a volcano in Ethiopia that settles in Djibouti's Danakil Desert. In the Danakil Desert, the Erta Ale volcano can be found. Volcanic lava flows have formed several desert lakes, which have been dammed in numerous valleys. One of the lakes is Lake Africa. One of the active volcanoes in the lake is the Erta Ale. The lake's beaches are covered in a thick salty crust. Number 8. Djibouti is mainly a desert landscape. Djibouti is mostly a desert country, over 90% of the land is desert. The land of Djibouti is arid for about 90% of the year. Djibouti has no permanent rivers, only salt lakes in the desert. The Grand Barra Desert covers Djibouti's southern portion. Desertification is a major issue in the country. From the narrow coastal plain, the land rises to a small chain of mountains in the north. The southern and central regions of Djibouti are covered in a rocky desert and scattered volcanic plateaus with shallow saltwater lakes. Number 7. It is a country rich with coral and fish species. The Gulf of Tadjra, in eastern Djibouti, is home to some of the world's most diverse coral and fish species. Djibouti has a plethora of attractive fish in the Gulf of Aden. The fish they use came from the Indian Ocean, Red Sea, and Arabian Sea. 80 species of reef-associated fish from 10 families have been discovered in Djibouti. Number 6. It is home to a U.S. military base in Africa. Camp Lemonnier, located in Djibouti City, is the United States military facility in Africa. In truth, it is the largest permanent American military presence in Africa. Around 4,000 people are stationed there, the majority of whom are part of the Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa. Djibouti's proximity to restive African and Middle Eastern countries makes it a useful location for military superpowers to station themselves. As a result, Djibouti is home to a number of military bases, including US, Chinese, and French. Number 5. It has 195 miles of beautiful coastline. Djibouti's coastline stretches for 195 miles long. Gold and white sand beaches make up a substantial chunk of this coastline. Most of the length is in the Gulf of Tadjra, a west-oriented trench with a depth of roughly half of a mile. The coastline to the north of Djibouti is dotted with coral reefs, shoals, islands, and islets. The beach is surrounded by up to 37 miles of flat, low, sandy, and lonely plains. Fragmented hills, mountains, and bisected plains can be seen in the background. As a result, cliffs and bluffs are not uncommon. Number 4. The residents are referred to as Djiboutians. Djiboutians are the people who live in Djibouti. Djibouti's population is divided into two ethnic groups. The Issa Somalis, also known as the Issas, account for roughly 60% of the population, with the Gadabursi constituting a minor fraction. 
In the same way, the Afars make up 35% of the population. The remaining 5% of the population is made up of Arabs, Ethiopians, and Europeans. The Somalis and the Afar both speak Cushitic languages, which are part of the Afroasiatic language family. Number 3. It is the third smallest country in continental Africa. Djibouti is the smallest country in continental Africa. It is also Africa's seventh smallest country, with a size of 23,200 square kilometers. It is the smallest of the countries that make up the Horn of Africa, which also includes Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia. The economy is quickly growing despite a lack of rainfall and natural resources. Number 2. Home to a lake that is saltier than the Dead Sea. Lakasal in Djibouti is the world's saltiest lake, except for Antarctica's lakes. It is, however, significantly saltier than the Dead Sea. Lake Asal, after Don Juan Pond, is the world's saltiest body of water, with an average salinity of 34.8%. The Dead Sea has a salinity of 33.7%. The Lac Asal is the most visited tourist attraction in the country. It has been relied on by many salt caravans in the past, and it continues to do so today. In European restaurants, Djiboutian salt is commonly used. The geology of the lake is fascinating. It is Africa's lowest point and the world's third lowest point after the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, at 155 meters below sea level. It's near the Afar Triple Junction, where three tectonic plates are separating, in the Danakil Desert. The area's summer temperatures can exceed 52 degrees Celsius, 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Extreme salinity is the result of substantial evaporation and no outflow. The lake used to be freshwater, according to geologists, and theories regarding what caused the change differ. It's likely that the sea flooded La Casale from a nearby bay. Rising sea levels caused flows that connected the lake to the sea. Or nearby volcanoes erupted, breaking the lake's initial connection to the Gulf of Tadjura. Regardless of the situation, the ultimate effect is riveting. Number 1. Taxi fare increase after sunset. On weekdays, taxi fares in Djibouti climb by around 50% after sunset, and by approximately 100% on weekends. The cost of a taxi varies depending on the distance traveled. It is an advantage for taxi drivers and disadvantage for passengers who are in a hurry to get to their destination. What do you think of our video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thank you for watching.